want to thank everyone for being here for the launching off historical 200th anniversary of East Bridgewater. They're not allowing me to say much about the history of East Bridgewater because I'm still a newbie. Because <laughs> I've only been here for 45 years or so. So I guess there's no bridge that you can cross over. Either you're born here or you're never accepted in the town. <laughs> but I would like everyone to please stand. We'll have the presentation of uh, the flags, please. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. If you could please remove any hats or coverings and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Please stay standing. We will now hear <clears throat> the National Anthem by the East Bridgewater Junior Senior High School Choir. Post. Thank you very much to uh, troop number 29, BSA, and again the East Bridgewater Junior Senior High School Choir. <laughs> uh, I now welcome Father Paul Ring, just for uh, introduction and welcome. I bring greetings on this evening from the East Bridgewater Clergy Association as we begin our celebration, our year-long celebration of our 200th anniversary. We uh, indeed uh, call upon our divine creator uh, to walk with us in this journey uh, so that we may continue to uh, grow in faith, in hope, and in love. And in that spirit, I would like to extend a further invitation to you uh, on April 22nd of this year. Uh, as part of the bicentennial celebration, I will be having a, an ecumenical celebration of the churches uh, to be held at St. John's uh, Church here in East Bridgewater, of course, uh, right next door. And uh, that happens at 6.30 in the evening uh, in the uh, church. Uh, we'll have a, an evening of uh, song and story, uh, and we would be most pleased uh, if you were to join us on that evening of April 22nd uh, at 6.30 p.m. 
Saturday evening, 6.30 p.m. Uh, at St. John's Church for an ecumenical celebration of uh, the history of our churches. God bless. Thank you, Father. Please be seated. Over the course of the next 12 months, we have an awful lot of people we have to thank starting tonight, and this will be carried on. First of all, we want to thank the uh, John Lefebvre and the Grace Bible Church for allowing us to be here tonight. We appreciate your hospitality. Um, the state of Massachusetts, our senators and our um, state representatives worked very hard to get some earmarked money to help us run all the events we'll be running during the course of the year. We appreciate that very much. <clears throat> we also received um, a donation from the South Shore Bank. Shannon Kilgore and Noreen Cahill are in the audience. Please stand. We, over the course of the last few months, have had a lot of vendors in and around East Bridgewater helping us put on the uh, programs we'll be doing for the rest of the year. And I'd like to thank them now. Um, you'll be seeing, if you go back to the town hall after we're through, Black Hat Brew will have a special brew that will be on sale throughout the course of the year at our restaurants and our liquor establishment with an anniversary can for the town of East Bridgewater for its 200th anniversary. Uh, Central Street Cafe will be um, over at the town hall afterwards for sandwiches and cookies and so on. Batter Up Cookie Company, um, Aaron Gardner in East Bridgewater will have some cookies and stuff. We're trying to get all the vendors we can in the local area. Happy Frog Rolls Culp has been tremendous in putting all our uh, presentations together, all our paperwork. Um, we can't thank her enough. Market Basket has um, given us our uh, cake for this evening. We have candles on sale, if you've seen them um, around. They'll be on sale at Town Hall afterwards by East Bridgewater Candle Company. Time Out Sportswear from Whitman, Massachusetts. They have our hats and they have uh, t-shirts and they have sweatshirts. Again, they'll be on sale afterwards. Bridgewater Trophy um, has been involved in getting us the Christmas ornaments that we had during the year and they'll also be putting out very shortly a memorabilia coin that's being put together as we speak. Um, Mary Haynes has worked on posters with some of the great front doors around town. You'll be seeing those when you get over to the town hall afterwards. I need to thank the, the committee. Um, I think Dale and I thought this up about 10 years ago, it seems. <clears throat> but we've been together for many, many months putting this together and planning out the year. You'll be hearing a lot of what we're doing in the future um, with the speakers that come up. But I want to thank Dale, and if you're here, please stand and get acknowledged. Dale Julius, Tom Turner, Noreen Cahill, John Haynes, Paul Connell, Dee Dee Rogers, Katie Cavanaugh, Beth Hayes, Nancy Hill, and a lot of volunteers, Chris Resendes, Trista Higgins, Retired Sergeant Bill Patterson, Diane Phillips, Kathy Wolf, Ted Haynes, Mary Haynes, Shannon Kilgore, Ian Kerrigan, Jen Turner, Norma Callahan, and Russ Hannigan. <clears throat> now I'm going to move right along since Dale told me I can't speak because I'm a newbie. We're going to start off with our guest speakers. We're going to start off with uh, Senator Michael Brady, followed by Senator Walter Timothy. Thank you, Select Board Member Sheedy. And I'm honored to be here and honored to represent the town of East Bridgewater on this special occasion. I uh, have a lot of memories going back. My mother had an antique sh uh, shop with Marie Davis on Route 18 in East Bridgewater many moons ago, and I had no gray hairs in those days, and so I was a little thinner. But we had a lot of great 
dignitaries and elected officials that served before us, and we, we'll ask Bob McCarthy, who was a great member of the community, and, and many dignitaries here tonight. I want to thank you all for being here. I'm not going to try to remember all your names because I'll get in trouble if I forget somebody, but I'm just honored to be here on this auspicious occasion. And I'm honored to also serve with our good friend, Senator Walter Timothy, and of course, Rep. Allison Sullivan and, and Jerry Cassie couldn't make it today. He's feeling ill, but uh, we have a great team at the sales, and no one does it alone, and we're, I'm very grateful for the team of elected officials and any help we can be moving forward with the town. Please let us know. So this is just the start tonight, the kickoff. So this is an official citation from the State Senate. Be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to the town of East Bridgewater in recognition of your mon monumental occasion of celebrating East Bridgewater's 200th, 200th anniversary and... Be it further known that the Massachusetts State Senate extends its best wishes for continued success. That this citation be duly signed by the President of the State Senate and attested to in a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. It has been signed by our Senate President, Senator Karen E. Spilka, attested to by our Clerk, Michael Hurley, and offered by two very proud State Senators, Michael D. Brady and myself, Walter F. Timothy. Uh, so congratulations to this wonderful town on the anniversary of the kickoff. And uh, I just want to thank the committee for all the hard work. Uh, much of the hard work isn't seen, but we enjoy the fruits of their labor with this wonderful celebration. Uh, this town enjoys the very best, and uh, the celebration of this town is certainly deserved, and uh, the greatness will continue for many years to come. So thank you all very much, and congratulations to our committee and to our select board. Hello, Peter. Hello, Carol. I have to doubly thank Senator Timothy. Um, unfortunately, the legislature, in their foolishness, decided to take Walter out of East Bridgewater. And uh, it was Bridgewater's gain, our loss. But we can tell how much he means to us because he's here tonight. And I still have him on speed dial, so he doesn't have to worry about that. <clears throat> Next up will be uh, State Representative Allison Sullivan. Uh, good evening, everyone. For those who don't know me, I'm Allison Sullivan, Almeida now. I was married uh, this past August, so you will see a little bit of a name change. It's still me, though. Um, I've had the privilege of serving East Bridgewater for the last four years and the honor to serve another two years in the House of Representatives. Like Senator Brady said, uh, Jerry Cassidy, who luckily for the redistricting, East Bridgewater gained uh, Jerry uh, in the redistricting. He unfortunately fell ill and was not able to make it tonight, but he has um, contributed very um, tremendously to this cause and to the celebration of the 200th year anniversary. So we do have a citation from the both of us. Um, we are hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincere congratulations to the town of East Bridgewater in recognition of the start of the monumental occasion of celebrating East Bridgewater's 200th anniversary. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all the endeavors. Given this 10th day of January 2023 at the State House, signed by the Speaker Ronald Mariano and offered by your State Representatives, Allison Sullivan Almeida and Jerry Cassidy, we just want to congratulate you guys um, on this effort. I know it hasn't been easy, especially with some of the roadblocks we've run into. Dave, Dave has uh, called me, I think, numerous times, making sure the funding came through. But um, so far, success. Um, so I just want to congratulate you guys and thank you so much on behalf of the House of Representatives for the um, hard work that's going into this. So thank you. And, and Dave did say we had to keep it under two minutes, so I hope I was successful in that. <laughs> you went over by 10 seconds, but who's counting? I was speaking for Jeremy, too. Okay, thank you. I have Allison on speed dial, also. Um, <clears throat> our next guest speaker, District Attorney Timothy Cruz. I had the uh, fun working with the uh, District Attorney a few weeks ago at a mock trial in East Bridgewater, and I'm glad Sheriff McDonald's here because there still appears to be an ethics problem with tampering with the jury <laughs> on that case, but we'll talk about that later. 
there's only one rule of mock trial, that's the DA wins. That's why Dave was happy, he was the defense attorney. But uh, I just, we just want to briefly say thanks so much for inviting me tonight. I want to thank the, the Bicentennial Committee. Last year was West Bridgewater's 200th. This year is East Bridgewater's. It's great to see everybody here. It's great for me to be here. I have 27 counties in Plymouth County, 27 towns in Plymouth County, County in the city of Brockton. And it's such a big, large area. But this town is very special to me. I grew up in West Bridgewater. Don't hold that against me. But um, my mom went to the high school at East Bridgewater. She lived at 144 West Union Street. That's where she grew up, the Hennessy's. My great, my great aunt I was involved in the sesquicentennial 50 years ago here in East Bridgewater. And they got married at St. John's, and Bob McCarthy was their altar boy. So, uh, you know, I, I have such a special feeling for this town, and I'm so glad to see it go forward here at this 200th anniversary. So I want to thank you all for your hard work. Thank all the, the, the selectmen. I know how difficult that, that job can be. Thank all of our elected officials for getting the appropriate funding. And let's have a great year, and let's have a great bicentennial. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. Next, our Registrar of Deeds, John Blockley, Jr. Well, first of all, congratulations to the town and to the committee. I know it's going to be a great year. A number of us, of, of us in the front row were part of the Plymouth 400. We had some great events. Unfortunately, COVID got in the way, and a lot of those events never occurred. Uh, you're in a lot better place now to do the events that celebrate your great history. We did a little work uh, before I came today. Uh, we are the keeper of the colony in the Plymouth County records, uh, mostly deeds, but also the colonial records, uh, the right to trial by jury, the right first in America, the uh, for, uh, be able to pri privately own property in America, those kinds of things. But we came across a court order that was in 1645 when the colonial court on October 20th, 1645, authorized a number of people to purchase the land that from Duxboro that later became this area, all these communities in this area. Um, it was four miles in each direction. Somehow, four years later, uh, they had negotiated a better deal and it was seven miles in East direct direction. But of those that, that of you that have seen what many people call the Bridgewater deed um, with a stamp of Miles Standish on that document, it's a fascinating uh, look at our times, what people paid for property, knives and, and moose skins and all of those kinds of things. So the, the, the areas we walk on every day is part of the great history of America and let's all celebrate it this year. Thank you. Okay, Plymouth County Commissioner, <clears throat> Jared Valenzola. Thank you, Dave, and to the committee. I I'm very lucky I get to follow Register John Buckley. He gives you all such great history, and I need to follow that up somehow. Um, but I'll echo his sentiments as well. It's certainly a privilege in the sentiments of, of, my, of the pre prior speakers. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be here as Commissioner. Uh, serving 27 communities in Plymouth County, of course, East Bridgewater being one of them. And it's a privilege to be able to be a part, a small part, of your 200th uh, anniversary celebration. It's remarkable to think, as, as the Register stated, some of the history that uh, encapsulates this town and this area, and certainly um, being on the forefront of what has uh, been a great American experiment for these last 300 or so years. Uh, so I bring the greetings on behalf of myself and my fellow commissioners, Sandra Wright and Gregory Hanley. Uh, they express their regrets they couldn't be with us uh, this evening, and also their sincere gratitude to the 200th committee. It's, it's a lot of hard work uh, to be able to put these events together. Uh, we do have something from the county. It's not any more money, Dave, unfortunately. <laughs> It's not any more money, unfortunately, but it's, uh, yeah. But this is uh, from the County of Plymouth presented to the Town of East Bridgewater in celebration of the bicentennial anniversary of the Town of East Bridgewater. The Plymouth County Commission is hereby declare January 10th, 2023 as East Bridgewater Day in Plymouth County. And that is signed Commissioner Sandra Wright, Commissioner Gregory Hanley, and myself, Chairman Jared Valenzola. Congratulations. Plymouth County Sheriff Joseph McDonald Jr. We, yeah, we're going to check into the jury tampering. Uh, good evening, one and all. Boy, it's bright lights here, and I can barely see you all. But uh, but it's a great pleasure to be here. I want to uh, want to thank the committee for inviting me and uh, asking me to say a few words. And I I will say a few words. I could say a lot of words, 
like uh, John Buckley, I'm a, a history guy, I'm a former history teacher, and I love to speak about these things, so hopefully those opportunities will present themselves later uh, so that we'll be able to do that. But it's wonderful to see, you know, here we are at a bicentennial celebration in Plymouth, we had the 400, didn't work out exactly the way that we had hoped that it would because of COVID, but we have high expectations for how we're going to be able to do this one. But I love history, I love the, the richness of it, the story of the history is great, and how things change over time. Uh, when Register Buckley was up here speaking, you know, he talked about how the land had been purchased and you know, the things that they used, what people paid for the land, the knives, the animal skins, and how things change. Because recently I showed up over at the Registry of Deeds with some knives and some animal skins, and <laughs> he told me to beat it. I, <laughs> sorry, John, I don't know. But uh, no, it's, it's really, it's, it's great to be here. Um, I look forward to, this will be a year-long celebration, and I really look forward uh, to coming back. And I'm sorry, I don't have a proclamation or anything like that. Whenever I get paper, it's usually a, a, an arrest warrant or a notice of eviction, so <laughs> thankfully I don't have any of those things. But no, it's my great pleasure to be here. Any assistance that I can render, I want you to know that uh, you know, we're standing by, and uh, I, I'm flattered and honored to be part of this. So thank you all. Now that we all realize that the uh, sheriff is a history buff, I can almost guarantee you we'll be seeing him up at the library one of these nights doing a uh, segment for us. Thank you for offering. We appreciate it. <laughs> <clears throat> Dennis Gallagher from the Bridgewater Town Council is coming up to give us some of his words of wisdom. We may have to cut him off a little. He says he's kind of a little bit long-winded this evening because they don't let him speak at his town city council meetings, I guess. Thank you very much. Yes, there is a Bridgewater Town Council meeting going on at this, uh, at this time, but I, uh, they sent me over here for some reasons. I think there's some votes they're taking at the meeting they didn't want me to participate in or anything. But, but thank you. It's, it's great to be, and I'm honored to be here today on behalf of the citizens of Bridgewater to be able to give a few remarks on this special occasion as East Bridgewater kicks off a year-long celebration of their bicentennial being incorporated as a town. East Bridgewater is a special place for me and my family. When I am asked as to where I am from, I always say I grew up in East Bridgewater, but I now live in Bridgewater. Depending on where I am and who I am speaking with, some may say, isn't that a part of Bridgewater? And I say, no. It hasn't been for over 200 years. But since then, they are separate towns. They have their own police, their own fire, their own school systems. And if I really want to confuse them, I say I'm from Elmwood, Massachusetts. <laughs> I remember growing up on Cottage Street in Elmwood. By the way, the streets are way overdue for repaving, whoever's in charge of that. <laughs> building, building huts out in the scout lot, adjacent to the Elmwood Cemetery is some of my fond memories of, of growing up on Cottage Street. I do remember vaguely as a kid the 1973 events when the town's sesquicentennial um, was celebrated and have recently come across, which I will share at some point during the year, some keepsakes that I have from my family from that year's long celebration. I graduated East Bridgewater High School in 1981 and dozens of my relatives have lived here over the last uh, century at least, and some are still living here. Attended schools going way back, uh, particularly on my mother's side of the family. She was a member of the class of 1943 here, which now is celebrating their 80th class reunion this year. The rich history here, traditions and characteristic of is a classic New England town, are still present to this very day. Yes, there have been changes, and growth is always expected anywhere. But as I often do, driving north on Bedford Street, Route 18, I enter Elmwood with the historic post office, which is still in operation, and remembering walking down there as a kid to get my mail and some snacks at the Flag store. Passing the Joppa Grill building, which still stands, and I still think of those cinnamon and sugar breadsticks that they served at that restaurant. Down to the fire station that once blew the 7 p.m. whistle every day, and, if, and again if school was canceled for the day. The new state-of-the-art 
junior senior high school indicates a commitment to education for future generations of this community and becoming a very historic building that I see every, every time I come down 18, uh, those 15 rooms facing Route 18 South, the Central, Elementary, Central Street Elementary School, with the over 100 windows and three floors, to the Hobart Park and the iconic brick building in the center of town. Some things have changed, but just as that small stretch in this community, it is still, it displays history, tradition, and growth. It is with high certainty that I won't be here for the 250th celebration, but I hope, and I am sure that many of you will also hope, that current and future generations will continue to honor the history and traditions this community and maintain the charm of a New England small town. It is with great pride that the town council of the town of Bridgewater present this proclamation to the town of East Bridgewater. Whereas East Bridgewater was first settled by Europeans in 1630 as an outgrowth of the Plymouth and Duxbury plantations, and whereas East Bridgewater was part of Old Bridgewater as the East Parish founded in 1723, and whereas East Bridgewater separated from Bridgewater and was officially incorporated June 14, 1823, and whereas East Bridgewater is a town in Plymouth County, Massachusetts, celebrating their year, 200 year anniversary in 2023, and whereas in recognition of the town of East Bridgewater's rich history of iron mills, boot and show manufacturing and textile mills, the town of Bridgewater is honored to pay tribute to the town and its residents. And therefore the Bridgewater Town Council wishes to recognize and congratulate the town and its residents on this momentous occasion. And this is signed by all members of the uh, Bridgewater Town Council. Thank you. Thank you. Before I forget, I just want to recognize, um, I believe David Smith is in the audience from the Blue Stone Bank. And they will be meeting tomorrow to uh, throw us some money, we hope. <clears throat> I think that's the purpose of the meeting. If not, then you can just cancel it, I guess. Um, Old Colony Planning Council, Mary Waldron. I can't spend enough time because I'm living it also on what Old Colony Planning Council has done for the town of East Bridgewater over the last many, many years. So we'll let Mary talk about some of it to us. Good evening, everyone. I'm the shortest, I think, of everybody here, Allison. Um, but short, my mother used to say to me, um, you know, people say good things come in small packages. My mother said so does in poison. So I'm not quite sure exactly where she was going with that. But I am honored to be here. I am not an elected official. And I just want all of you here um, to give a round of applause for those who have decided to run and be here for your community. So first, I really do. Not being a person who has ever run for elected office, it does, and particularly in these trying times, it takes a lot. And to the board of selectmen, um, to the legislators, to the county commissioners, to, to all who are here, um, I, again, I'm honored. Um, I have two people that I particularly want to acknowledge, our delegate and alternate, so Peter Spagone and John Hayes, who are, are it was a funny story how Peter came about because he wanted to serve on our transportation. And we said, you can't. And I said, but I've got a position that's open for a delegate on our, on our board. So Old Colony Planning Council First is a regional planning agency. We have 17 communities, um, plus we have an additional six that we deal with uh, elder care services. Um, so quite a few. And, um, but Peter and John both have been incredible resource to us, along with Charlie Selig. I will tell you in the past three years that I've been in this position, We've done more work in the town of East Bridgewater because of not only they as our delegates, but also to the legislators as well as the select board. They truly care. And I think it's evident today that the fact that there has been funding that has come from the legislature and from private business 
You know, it's, it's, it takes a village, and, and, and one of the things that we do at, at Old Colony Planning Council is that we plan. So you cannot plan for the future without having respect for your history, for the past, right? You can't dwell on the past, but you have to respect it. So these 200 years that has been what this community is today, and talking with Beth, who I've known when um, my husband used to work for Tom Kennedy, Senator Tom Kennedy, and so did Beth. But you know, one of the things that we were able to talk about is the networking. So it's businesses coming together with legislators, coming together with volunteers and citizens. And us, we're here, and we have to be here to continue to work forward. So when you see the guys that are out there on Route 18 doing traffic counts, that, that's the data that's gonna be needed to see an improvement to the craziness of Bedford Street, but yet still continue to bring in businesses because that's gonna alleviate other kind of things. Um, it's, it's again, it's us all working together and I truly am honored to be here and, um, and wish the town um, all the best, and we at Old Colony Planning Council will be sharing all of your events and invite all of our, the rest of our 16 communities to be here and celebrate with you. So congratulations and happy anniversary. Fantastic, Mary. <clears throat> I'm glad I had a little chance to help you with that speech. It came out very well. <clears throat> Next up is uh, our beloved chair of the uh, East Bridge Water Board of Selectmen, Peter Spagone, Jr. And we know once Peter gets started, he may last for a while, so let's, let's. I was told last night at the Selectman's meeting I spoke too long, so I had to cut down today's, uh, today's event. But listen, first off, I, I want to say to both da Dale and to uh, David, uh, tremendous job putting this together. You and your committee, um, you know, I know what events take uh, on a large and small scale. And to see something like this that's going to last throughout the year, uh, I praise both of you and congratulate you guys for, uh, for putting it together. So thank you very much. <clears throat> so I had written down a few things, you know, what I want to talk about, what should I say. But honestly, um, you know, in listening to some of the speakers already, uh, you know, a lot of things resonate back to me. So I'm a Brockton guy. Uh, you know, born and raised, I always talk about South Side, you know, the toughness of Brockton, and that's where I come from, and that's where my grit is. My, both my parents grew up on the East Side, so a lot of that uh, has involved into me. But, you know, uh, moving here when I was about 12 or 13 years old, uh, I can remember the one event that uh, we participated in while we were still in Brockton, that was the 150th anniversary of the town. And that event to me, uh, as only a very, very young child at the time, uh, stuck in my mind, has always stuck in my mind, some of the, the things that went on during that, uh, during that month or year that they had. Uh, and one of the uh, places that put on that event, some of those events was the commercial club. And you know, I've been involved now with the club for many years. They're you know, a great charity in town. They try to do a lot of things for the, uh, the local people as well as the, uh, the children in the community. But, uh, this, for this event, on the 10th of June, they'll be celebrating uh, in the commercial at the Commercial Club uh, an event I think that's going to be, uh, be really well taken. It'll be from all the things that we've seen from the chicken barbecue to the, uh, the concerts to uh, a big bonfire at the end. So some of that heritage that we've seen over the years and, and as children or growing up that we um, expected to happen will continue to happen over there. Uh, that being said, you know, uh, I'm honored to be here, uh, being able to speak. I brought my, my daughter Quinn so that she could understand uh, also the, the importance of, of this event. And, you know, as, um, as was said earlier, you know, I may not be here in the next 50 years, but she certainly will. And, you know, and, and to be involved in an event like this and to understand, as I did for the 150th, to see some of the things that have gone on, hopefully it resonates to her and she continues to, to bring that to her generation of people that come through. But again, congratulations. I look forward to the events that come out this year and uh, both me and I think from Carol as well, as she speaks, uh, we, we appreciate your work. Thank you. So Quinn, I bet you didn't expect that type of homework coming from your father just to drop him by here. <clears throat> Next, I'm honored to uh, bring the vice chair of the board, Carol Julius, up here. 
Um, I know there's going to be a little contest going on here on who's going to speak the longest, <laughs> Carol or uh, Dale, so could someone time this for us? <laughs> His is longer. <laughs> oh, no, on. Okay, still getting used to the trifocal thing? Um, hello, and thank you for inviting me to share a few words this evening. I have been looking forward to East Bridgewater's Bicentennial for quite some time, and I'm very excited to be a part of this wonderful kickoff for a full year of celebrating our town's longevity. I think part of the reason I feel a strong connection to our bicentennial is related to my experiences during the bicentennial of the American Revolution. I was 10 years old in 1975 when we started to celebrate 200 years of American independence. My mother, in particular, was extremely excited about all things bicentennial, and she made it a mission for our family to participate as much as possible and visit as many local historic sites as we could. We walked the Freedom Trail, we visited the John Quincy Adams Museum, we toured the tall ships in the Boston Harbor, we even got up in the wee hours, like 3 a.m., to travel to Concord on Patriot's Day for the commemoration of the 200th anniversary of the shot heard around the world. All of this made a lasting impression on me and ignited my love of history and honoring that history whenever possible. The Bicentennial Committee has been meeting diligently and working hard for well over a year to plan programs and events that will have a wide range of appeal. There are things happening all year long, but I want to take a moment to highlight the programs that the library is offering. I don't know why they asked me to do the library, but you know. Um, a Town Inspired Scavenger Hunt is currently underway, and that will go until January 21st. All you need to do is visit the library for clues, and then search for various town and library-related people, places, and things, and I am told there are prizes. On January 21st, the library is sponsoring a program titled Hometown History, The Bridgewaters. This presentation by the Old Colony History Museum will explore the history of the Bridgewaters. Also at the library this month will be a program with New England legends um, Jeff Belanger. This event will be on January 30th at 6.30 p.m. and will feature a tour of haunts, monsters, aliens, and weird history related to our region, and I hear it's not to be missed. Those are just a few of the wonderful events planned to encourage you to learn more about how our town came to be. I invite you to take advantage of these programs and more. Get yourself some East Bridgewater swag and wear it proudly and build relationships with others in our community while you do so. In closing, I want to thank the members of the Bicentennial Committee for all your hard work, including your co-chairs, Dave Sheedy, my colleague on the Board of Selectmen, and Dale Julius, my colleague in life. <laughs> These fine folks have planned a year-long party for all of us, East Bridgewater, and it's going to be epic. Thank you. Our next guest speaker is our, our new town administrator, uh, Charlie Selig. He doesn't have a lot of history with us, yes, but he's had such a learning curve over the last 14 or 15 months. Uh, I'd be very curious on what he's going to be saying tonight. When I was hired last year to serve as East Bridgewater's town administrator, I mentioned that along with all the regular projects that would be part of my work here, that I was looking forward to being a part of the town's 200th anniversary celebration. The year has passed, and you've welcomed a stranger in your midst to help all of you, and all of you have been so welcoming, the board, department heads, fellow employees in Town Hall and all the other buildings, and all of you as residents, as neighbors, and now as friends. The Bicentennial Year will provide opportunities for all of us to learn about East Bridgewater's history, to attend a cavalcade of events of all types with our friends and neighbors in East Bridgewater and the surrounding communities, and to be part of why East Bridgewater is a great place to live and work. Due to the dedicated work by the members of the Bicentennial Committee and the volunteers for all these events, along with contributions from employees from all the departments of the town, the tr next 12 months will have something for everyone. And my hope is, just as you welcome me, that you will welcome everyone else to East Bridgewater during this year and to know why this is such a great community. And I do hope to meet as many of you as possible. I'll be trying to make as many of those events as possible and look forward to all of them throughout the year. But I stand between you and free beer. So <laughs> welcome and onward. For some reason I thought the free beer was going to be a part of uh, Charlie's summation of the night. Our next speaker needs absolutely no introduction. 
he's been working tirelessly for, I think, as Carol said, close to a year. We started this at a, just a quick conversation one afternoon. What are we going to do for the next celebration? And here we are. Um, Dale Julius. Thank you, and good evening. Can I sing my speech? <laughs> Much easier that way for me. <clears throat> good evening, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, elected officials, department heads, and town employees, and most of all, the citizens of East Bridgewater. Thank you for attending this event tonight as we begin what promises to be a momentous year in the history of our town. I've traveled pretty extensively throughout Massachusetts and our neighboring states over the years, and one of the things I've observed is that New, England, New Englanders are sure proud of their roots. And I will admit that I've been asked that famous question many times, have you lived here your whole life? Truth, uh, I always answer with the classic Yankee reply, well, not yet. <laughs> Truth be told, I didn't move to East Bridgewater until I was two, but after 70 years, I feel like I'm almost one of you. <laughs> Quite seriously, I've always felt that East Bridgewater is a great place to come from or come to. Whether your family has been here for generations or you've lived here for 50 years, 20 years, 10 years, whether you've lived here for just a few weeks or you were raised, you raised here and moved away, as one of our speakers talked about, or you're currently raising your family here, it doesn't matter, you'll always be part of East Bridgewater, and East Bridgewater will be part of you. To something special about living in a small town, and perhaps most special of all is the people. I'd like to go on record and say that this town has some very fine people, and together we have created a terrific community. We may not all know each other, but we all have East Bridgewater in common. And I am very proud and honored to be here tonight and to be part of this bicentennial celebration. I'd like to share a quote from the book, How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith, because I think it really illustrates how I feel about honoring the past. I've come to realize that there's a difference between history and nostalgia, and somewhere between those two is memory. I think that history is a story of the past using all the available facts, and that nostalgia is a fantasy about the past using no facts, and somewhere in between is memory, which is kind of the blend of history and a little bit of emotion. I mean, history is kind of about what you need to know, but nostalgia is about what you want to hear. So I think we can pay tribute to that quote throughout the coming year. This is our chance to go out and make a little East Bridgewater history by celebrating our bicentennial in a big way. We can create happy memories all year, and then in the future, we can sit back and recall it all and let the magic of nostalgia take over. In closing, I'd like to say happy birthday, East Bridgewater, as we, are, as we not only look to our future, but also treasure our past. Thank you for attending tonight. I look forward to seeing you all in the coming year. And as I close, I wanted to thank our co-chair, who said so many kind words tonight. It's not like him to do that. But. <laughs> So to, to, close, to close the evening off, again, Dave Sheedy. Thank you very much. If nothing else has come out of this evening, the curtain is down, Mr. Julius. You are not a native. <laughs> you, what have you been doing all these years? Again, um, thank you for everyone um, that showed up tonight. Please let your friends know Watch our Facebook page, watch the town website for all the activities that will be coming up over the next 11 and 12 months. We even have fireworks scheduled for June, which has been quite a while since the town's had those. Um, I invite everyone back to the town hall. We have all our memorabilia um, down on the first floor conference room, and we have a buffet um, reception up on the second floor conference room. And we welcome all you there. Be careful out there. Let's have a great year. God bless America. God bless East Bridgewater.